So now that you've seen the basics of yield, as always, I'm going to dissect this and show you what's really going on under the covers. I, uh, if you just want to use yield and get stuff done, go for it. Uh, if you want to be more professional, I encourage you to actually understand the details of what's going on here so that that uh, you can talk competently about what, how this stuff works. And especially when we get into link and look at... Uh, some queries later on. Yield, understanding yield helps you understand deferred execution, which is a critical concept in Link. Anyway, um, as always, like I, what I like to do is is take a simple example like this, compile it, and then uh, look at it in the reflector. Um, so, and if you don't have the reflector, you can Google reflector and download that and install it. And I think you have you have to pay for it and stuff like that. But I have a simple little. Uh, batch file, if I say type c.bat, uh, my batch file will compile main class.cs, which is this file here, and then I say reflector main class, which will uh, run the reflector on that class. So let's just run this batch file, pull up the reflector, and voila. So here's main class. This is the assembly, or the resulting exe, I suppose, uh, from, from this code file over here. So let's let's just poke around in here a little bit. Um, in the empty namespace, I had a main class here, and let's just go straight to the main and see what the reflector is finding in main. Notice I have this set to show us the C sharp. I could choose IL, and well, I could go to a bunch of different languages if I wanted to, but C sharp or IL are the ones I always look at. Um, so if you look the main here, and I also have before we do that. I'm going to say view options, and I've set my uh, optimization to .NET 3.5. Depending on how low or how primitive I want to go, the lower number I choose, like if I choose .NET 1.0, I'll see more primitive code because it's using very basic language features to get the same result. Um, but I set it to 3.5 to get the effect I want for this video. So, notice main looks a lot like what we had over here. Uh, in fact, let me um, steal some screen real estate back by collapsing that. So the mains look very identical. Okay. Um, now let's look at get random numbers. I'm going to click here on get random numbers. If you notice the get random numbers, it looks very different from what I coded up. My get random numbers has this for loop with this yield return in it. But the actual result that ended up in the missile IL level, the intermediate language level, all it does says is return new an instance of this class. And the class name has angle brackets on it because that's legal for the C-sharp compiler to do, but it's not legal for us to do in C-sharp. Hence, when the C-sharp compiler generates class names, it knows using angle brackets it will never collide with any class name we'll ever use. But basically, the C-sharp compiler generated this class. Okay, and when, and when I said in, a, in the previous video that we dump a whole ton of syntactic sugar when we use yield, that's what I'm saying. It's yield, yield new get random numbers. If you remember, when I stepped through this, I had F10... Um, and I F11 on get random numbers. We never get into get random numbers until we hit the in, which actually says let's get an enumerator and let's get going. All right. And if that doesn't, uh, if you don't mean, know what I mean by getting an enumerator and get going, please check out the for each video because for each itself is syntactic sugar. Anyway, when we execute get random numbers, we actually can't step into it. It's kind of hidden away because this is really not the body of get random numbers. The body of get random numbers is this new return to new instance of this thing. Okay, so I'm going to click on this thing uh, just to see what what's going on here. It looks like it took us to the constructor. Uh, let me uh, let me get some screen real estate. Okay, so it took us to the constructor of this class that the C sharp compiler generated. So I actually want to view the whole class. So I click on the class and you can see here this class, how handy. It implements I enumerable, uh, generic, non-generic, and I enumerator. It just can't make up its mind. Is it enumerator? Is it enumerable? Or is it an enumerator? Ah, we'll get to that soon enough. But it's kind of playing playing both parts here. Um, we actually said on our method here that we're going to return an I enumerable. So that's totally legit that when the compiler uh, created this this class to return f in place of our code here, that the class implements I enumerable of int. So that's completely legit. And then we can see there's some private data members the compiler added here. We'll get into and some other stuff, uh, some attributes. 
uh, reset dispose, those come from uh, iNumerator and so forth. I'm going to click expand methods so you can see this whole thing. And oh, Nelly, look at all this. There's move next here, and it looks like move next is setting some state. And I have this while loop, and the while loop probably looks a lot like my for loop. Okay, so the reflector is reading back the looping code as my uh, uh, for my for loop as a while loop, which is perfectly fine. But it looks like uh, this is my i here, and sets it to zero. And while i is less than count, uh, i plus plus down here. Uh, it looks like we're getting a random number here and stuffing it in a temporary variable and all that kind of stuff. But whoo, yeah, lots of sugar. Get numerator. Um, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a polygamous colony. It's 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 uh, all tangled up there. Uh, I'll dissect that in a future video. But it has current. Um, hopefully, again, re refer to the iNumerable and iNumerator videos if you want to learn about current and disposes is uh, empty there. Anyway, whew, reset's kind of interesting, actually. Not supported. It's, it's, I think, I'm not sure, but when the cr creators or fathers of the C-sharp language, or .NET or whatever you want to call it, uh, created the iNumerator interface, I think they thought that reset would be used a lot, so they actually and it reset, and turns out I've actually never ended up calling it in any of my professional code. I don't know of any of my peers who have, so it's kind of useless. I think they, hindsight's twenty twenty. they probably wouldn't add that again. But basically, yield causes the compiler to create this entire class here. Um, and if you notice, the current basically stores the current element. All right, So current is the random next. So every time I call move next on this, uh, iterator or enumerator. Uh, it says, okay, I'm going to store the current item. And then um, count, well, count came from my for loop. And then uh, uh, remember, count, actually, it didn't come from my for loop. It came from an argument here. I'm saying I want 10 random numbers. So, so it actually stored the count here so it would know when to go because that's what my wall condition is based on is this wall count. Okay, and then Oh, look at that. There's go-tos in there. Oh, go-tos are so evil. Oh, no. Ignore them. They're so, no, go-tos have their place, and the compiler can do whatever it wants. But, um, anyway. Uh, initial thread idea I think is interesting. So, in the next video, I'm going to take this gobbledygook, and I'm actually going to pretend I'm the compiler and type this up as the compiler would do it. Just Because I think sometimes this is intimidating to look at if you don't have... Um, an eye for it. I th let me just walk you through it in the next video.